Thanks to Squarespace for supporting this channel. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Bing. Previously. I decided to use your guys' comments on my last video to make a skit about... <laughs> I'm doing art challenges, giveaways, sharing extra videos, my reference photos. Make sure you check out the link down below. But now, time for the fun stuff. This painting took me this many hours to complete. It was done entirely in blue, white, black, and yellow. Dirt cheap acrylics, so if that's what you have at home, you'll fit right in here. And with the assistance of Kyler, we have some do's and don'ts to share as well for this tutorial. Grab a paintbrush and enjoy. Welcome to the voiceover. Today we are being assisted on our don't side by my lovely husband, Kyler. Thanks to him for being such a good sport and doing this little demonstration for us. Right off the bat, can you guys tell what his first mistake was? We're gonna let him play it out for a little while and then he'll uh, notice himself. Recently, Kyler watched a Bob Ross tutorial, so he is employing the stamping technique to make his leaves. We'll be going over a different technique in my half of the tutorial. Now here's where he started to realize the error of his ways. It's really important that you have an order to your painting because if you do your foreground before your background, well, you're either gonna have to paint in between all of your details or uh, do what Kyler did and just paint over the whole thing and start over. <laughs> Next, he used a paintbrush that, while a good shape is just much too large for the detail work he wants, and he didn't mix in any amount of water to help with the glide and flow of his paint so that he get more detailed. After that, he went back in with his stamping technique. This is a technique you can use. I don't personally love it myself because of how globby your paint gets and because you can't really get quite as fine of details as what I usually go for, but that's a personal choice of aesthetic. Next, he ran into his order of layers problem again. He needed to do his middle ground right after he'd done his far back background, but he ended up keeping all his foreground layer and just painting around it this time to come up with this finished product. As you can see, there is some remnants of the stamping, there's a little bit of translucency, some lack of brush control, but overall he did a really good job. Our colors are actually extremely similar and I was pretty impressed. So first I'm going in on my side with our background layer. This is a very light blue. I'm just adding blue, white, and very small portion of of yellow together. This piece has a very atmospheric quality and as you'll see we start with a very light background layer and each layer of trees and forestation is going to get darker as we get closer to the viewpoint. So first I'm just putting a smooth layer of this light blue on there and next I'm going to be doing a charcoal drawing transfer. Now if you've seen a few of my tutorials you've probably seen this technique already so uh reinforce some knowledge for you. I'm going to be using new pastels, which is basically just a hard chalky form of pastel. You could use a charcoal or some graphite instead though. You want to coat the entire back of it very thoroughly, and then I use a paper towel to just kind of rub it all together, make sure I don't have any loose particles or empty paper space, and then I just get rid of the dust particles. Next, you want to tape this on, I would suggest in two areas because if it becomes detached, it's a pain in the butt to line it back up again. So you want to tape it on and just trace out your general shapes. Right now I'm only tracing out my middle ground layer and later I'll go in and trace out my foreground. Make sure you take a peek underneath so you know that it's transferring correctly. And then it helps to just do a spritz of fixative or hairspray to lock in that layer of drawing so it does not smudge, smear, or mix in with your paint. For my middle ground layer, I have a medium shade of blue-gray. I'm just adding white, black, blue, and yellow together. 
and then I'm filling this in kind of like a coloring book page. You'll see later I'm going to do some freehand trees. It really isn't necessary to do this step if you don't want to, but if you are just getting oriented with figuring out the silhouettes of these kinds of trees and you want a little extra help, I would suggest trying this out. Sometimes it helps just to do this kind of a transfer while you are figuring out some of these basic principles, the shapes and forms of these kind of organic objects, just so you can build up foundational knowledge and then apply it later when you've really mastered that skill. I'm going to be leaving some empty spaces around my trunk area because it's not a solid chunk of object, it's leaves and they kind of have some air space in between them. And then I'm going to add a little bit of texturing to the top of the forest line by flicking up my paintbrush in different areas lightly with a little bit of water mixed in so I can have a very smooth brush flow. And lastly I'm just going to be filling in the entire bottom with this color. I want to make sure I go over it a couple times, create some layers because I am using very cheap paint and there are areas that show through from the background and I really want to make sure I have a very solid foundational layer. Now a lot of this will get covered up by my foreground objects but I want a good base behind there for whatever does show through. At this step I was doing a new technique. I don't know a lot about acrylics but I was trying out doing a glazing using some acrylic medium that I have. This is my liquid text medium that I used. I just mixed a tiny amount of paint in with my medium so that I had a translucent pigment meaning that stuff from the background will be able to show through. I did a lighter glaze on top to make it more misty and atmospheric and got darker towards the bottom. Next I'm taping on my printout again and this time I am going over the entire foreground with my pencil and transferring those trees in. Checking whenever I need to to make sure things are transferring correctly and in the right places so I don't have any surprises when I peel it off at the very end. It might have been helpful for me to do this transfer layer with a different color. If I had done something like black, that would have been more accurate to the actual color of the trees. And it might have helped in areas where the paint was a little bit more translucent going on so that I had a background color that kind of matched more of this dark blue that I'm using for my silhouettes. I do have a little bit of water mixed in with my paint just to smooth those brush strokes and make sure we have really smooth lines lines, very easy brush control. I'm basically still filling this in like a coloring book. My leaves have a little bit of a tick kind of motion, a little flick of the wrist, and I'm making sure that I go over it and just build up that opaqueness. In little areas of detail, I use my fine brush. Make sure you guys are shifting brush sizes and shapes as needed. For your little details, you're gonna want a tiny tip on a round brush. For larger areas, you might want something more like a squared off head or is that called a filbert? Where it's squared off but rounded on the corners? Now I decided to add a little bit more balance to my composition and added a tree to the far left. I made this color in between our furthest back layer of trees and our closest up layer of trees to add a little bit more of dimensionality to the composition. With your trunk, make sure it is thickest at the base, thinnest at the top. You need that heavy base to hold up a tree structurally, so you're going to want it thicker there. And then just make sure when you do your branches, they're not completely straight. You have a little bit of variation and wiggliness to them. And they too are thickest at the base near the trunk. All of these motions are little ticking motions, tick and drag using water where needed to get a little bit of a better even pull on my paintbrush. You just want to make sure you don't have too much symmetry because this is nature and everything is going to look very organic. It gives you a lot of play with how you depict your branches and leaves. But make sure you go in and add all those little details. And then for the final steps, first I just added a little bit more opaqueness to my branches and leaves. And then I went over the whole thing with a glossy spray finish. Just think it gives it an overall very finished look and it makes it so the top surface is more protected and you can clean it or keep it from chipping or peeling as easily. And voila, here is our final product. If you guys want me to see any of your work, make sure you use the hashtag CRobin. Also, I keep forgetting to ask, but it's super important. What do you guys keep coming back to my channel for and what kind of videos are you looking forward to more of in the future? More skits, tutorials, do's and don'ts. Time-lapse paintings. Whatever it is, I wanna know what you guys like about this channel and how I can continue to make it grow, so please let me know in the comments. Yeah, now.
Roll a clip. If you're looking to start a website or sell your art to create an online business, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform flexible for any kind of website or creator that offers unique domains, beautiful designer templates, and has award-winning 24-7 customer service. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and enter the code CLANTS to get 10% off your first purchase. Bye!